All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let me get some fists in the chat if you can hear me loud, crisp, and clear, and we will get this party started. Hit the like button on the way in. Hit the cash app or the PayPal if you support the mission. Good Lord, it looks like we're talking about a lot of scamming-ass Africans as of late. <laughs> hey, let's uh, turn back time for a minute. You guys remember when Akon was talking down to Black Americans, talking about that we're just whining about brutality in america and we need to go to africa and everybody needs to go to africa and why is it that these goddamn tethers always flee africa while trying to convince us to go to the place they're fleeing oh because they have a scam they're promoting that's right if anybody is promoting you going to africa it's because they got something to sell you let's get into um what akon was promoting before we get into the false dream he sold us Welcome to the African Leadership Series, where we bring you great inspirational speeches from African leaders. Africa is the only place in the world where black people can go and build Fortune 500 companies from scratch within five years. Do, do Africans even have Fortune 500 companies right now? Is there a single African Fortune 500 company right now? Did this motherfucker just say that you can start from scratch and build a Fortune 500 company in under five years? What, uh, sir, sir? I love when you lying like that. So I'm a deep lying like that. I love when you lying like that. So I'm a deep lying like that. Okay, then. All right. He's starting off strong with the lying. Yeah. Oh, and you know what? On the last stream, I missed a, a PayPal. Bridget, thank you for the contribution. I appreciate you, darling. Come on, y'all. Akon was still a uh, man's family fled Africa. He made all his money in America. But now he's telling us to go to Africa because we're going to make Fortune 500 companies in less than five years. Meanwhile, the motherfuckers can't even get closed toe shoes. Welcome to the African Leadership Series, where we bring you great inspirational speeches from African leaders. Africa is the only place in the world where black people can go and build Fortune 500 companies from scratch within five years. Wow. It'd be like China, easily. No, seriously. And this took them hundreds of years to build. You can yeah, build it now crazy. within five years. Yeah. China took that same, you know, mind state 25 years ago. China was no different from Africa 25 years ago. Yeah. Go to China now. Look at Dubai, the Middle East. They just started 15 years ago. Go back to Africa. Okay. Whatever you're doing here, do it there. Why is it always a mush mouth scamming ass African telling us to go back? What do you mean go back? Those that are descendants of slaves, our folks were sold by y'all. And we've been over here in America for hundreds of years. 
new culture, ethnogenesis. We got shit popping. We've got one of the most powerful nations on earth. Why would we want to go back to a shithole? Well, so, uh, real estate, uh, entertainment, education, label, sneaker company, whatever, clothing line, whatever. Start it there. Do it there. Don't even start it. Do it there. It's going to grow out of there anyway. But Africa's big enough. You won't ever have to need no other country anyway. So we got we got a, we literally got a pot of gold and nobody even going for it. Exploited by outside. I wonder, guys. You know what? In, in in the business world, they have a saying. You know, if it's too good to be true, right? If it's too good to be true, I mean, come on. So Africa just has like a pot of gold, and all the Africans are poor and then famished and warring and butchering and trafficking one another. But there's just like a pot of gold there. Then why won't the Africans access their own pot of gold? Wait, wait, I should go to Africa and spend my resources from America and Africa to get some hidden pot of gold that's in Africa that Africans can't even access? All right, make it make sense. Meanwhile, this is a fucking rapper. This is a rapper giving us advice on business and culture and commerce. How do we start this? How do we start? How do we start to say, you know what? Let's invest back in the motherland. Let's, let's, let's. I think the key is, you know, first of all, you got to release the fear because a lot of, you know, African-Americans are afraid to go to Africa. If you are in a position. I wonder why a lot of African-Americans are afraid to go to Africa, he says. Well, goddamn it, Mike TV has been producing content about the African-Americans that go to Africa and get murdered. Oh, Lord. Let's take a quick commercial break to see if there's some truth to the fears that some FBAs have of moving to a third world and famished shithole warring country. Creep on in, on in, on in. Because all this wicked stuff they're doing to diasporans, killing us on the continent, people showing up dead and nobody know what happened. God, Allah, does not approve of this. And that's why I'm here. They took my heart job. They took my earphones. Oh my god. Oh my god. The five were Anja Africa, who passed away. Just last week, uh, Veronica Histed, who had a YouTube channel and was a Black American, and the last video on her channel was six months ago. There was a woman named Mary who owned a boutique called Natty Locks Boutique, where she did hair, and she and her employees did hair over in the Gambia. There was Beverly Allen, who they also call Dr. Beverly. And there was Audrey Davis, who had a YouTube channel as well. Come on, I rest my case. And he's going to make it seem like us Americans have irrational fears of going to Africa. All right. Meanwhile, he made his money in America, cosplaying us. I rest my case. And shout out to Big Hank. Thank you for the contribution. Appreciate you putting five on it, brother. In life, where you feel like you don't own your own content, you don't own anything, and they should be investing in us. This is the opportunity now to be able to own that in which we're complaining about. Mm. Because in Africa, it's a clean slate. You can build that empire there. You can build that infrastructure there. It just and you already got the you know the information. You're already educated. 
on how to do it because we've done it here. <laughs> you're looking at Akon like you ain't making no gun. So do you know you're not making any sense? Right? You want Americans to go to Africa because you think we can build empires in Africa, sir. Africa's a shit, sir. We got to take five shots j just to travel to Africa and make sure that they don't have a, a genocide, uh, civil war going on at the time of visiting. I mean, what are you talking about? Made billions of dollars for corporations all day, and then every all the value that we bring here, we took over there. America wouldn't exist no more. Bob Lev and Zumanda, oh, none of that would work. Think about it. Just imagine, man, all, all the major ball players left, started their own team back home. So you want all the major black American ball players to move their native country of America, uh, move from there and go to Africa to play ball in the Sahara or in the, the Congo? Uh, all, all right. All right. All the major recording artists left, started their own labels back home. Just imagine, just those two sectors. We're not talking about all the inventors that never got the credit for all the shit that they're inventing, like cell phones and all that, that black people invented. Black you would never even know. All these, these software companies that's taken, you know, all, you have no idea, like, we don't even know how much value we even have. We have no idea. Just imagine if we just woke up one day. I gotta wake up with you, Ace. <laughs> so he wants us to believe that we have to just wake up one day and move to africa um and what buy a home in the fake ass scam city that you never built um i think he also had a crypto scam he was doing i mean all right this is strange this is strange you always got to remember what is somebody trying to sell you and we know what Akon was trying to sell us. This motherfucker, this rapping ass African claimed that he was going to start a whole city, y'all. He was going to build a city. This motherfucker ain't never built a hospital, ain't never built a police station. Uh, Dr. Umar Johnson got more history building shit than him. And you know how terrible that's been going. So, um, good Lord, Akon wants us to believe he's building a city, y'all. In 2020, rapper Akon made an announcement that he was building his own $6 billion future city in Africa that looks like the hybrid of Dubai and the fictional city of Wakanda. Akon City is where innovation meets luxury, with five distinct districts designed to redefine urban living. See the African Village District, where modern waterfront homes beckon, and a sprawling, all-inclusive resort awaits your end. This motherfucker ain't never built a resort, but he's gonna build a resort? restaurants open bazaars and chattels but his resume says rapping on beats pretending to be a black american indulgence experience exhilaration in the entertainment district boasting a cutting-edge multi-purpose stadium and a colossal casino for endless excitement witness the future on oh lord hold on we gotta rewind a little bit so he's never built a resort and spa but he's gonna build a resort and spa Villages, chateaus, bazaars, a mall, a casino, a stadium, and parking structures. And his LinkedIn profile says rapping over beats. Stadium and a colossal casino for endless excitement. Witness the future unfolding in the tech district, poised to become the Silicon Valley of Africa, where groundbreaking technologies. He's also going to create his own Silicon Valley in Africa. He has no tech background, hasn't built a website, let alone an app, but he's going to build a casino and malls and resorts and restaurants and a, all sort of silicon. He's just making Wakanda, guys. He might as well just called it Wakanda. He, he's making Wakanda. Shape tomorrow's world. And of course, the essential health and safety district, because public services such as police stations, fire. Oh shit, the rapper is going to make a police station, a residential building, an office building, a fire department, an outpatient clinic, and a general hospital. God damn it, I had no idea that Akon was so multifaceted. I mean, Africans are just such supreme beings. They can create hospitals and fire departments and police stations and casinos and resorts. And restaurants, then why is their country such a fucking disaster? Does anybody have an answer?
care departments, and a general hospital are key to residents' quality of life. The Education District will provide comprehensive learning opportunities for both children and adults, ensuring growth and development for all. And lastly, the glamorous Senawa District, which features four state-of-the-art filming studios, offices, and residential spaces. All Damn, we're going to build Acon Tower, multiple filming studios, a media tower. This motherfucker make a metropolis. I'm surprised he don't have a big Superman-like statue of him with his tether forehead in the middle of the city, y'all. This, wow. I didn't know that Akon was like Tony Stark mixed with Bill Gates. Like, damn, Akon is just such a multifaceted person. Damn. Hey, it's crazy, though. It's crazy. Again, his resume says rapper, but you know, one rapper or museum, or excuse me, um, one rapper or artist who I would actually trust to build uh, buildings and structures and facilities. Uh, uh, only one rapper that I think could actually pull something off. Well, uh, for one, he's actually a billionaire by the name of Kanye West. For two, he actually has a bit of a background in design and, and, and different elements. And God damn it, if he can go from rapper to fashion mogul, then maybe he can parlay his wealth into building a city or something. But I trust Kanye, the FBA Kanye, with a, with a plan of an African city much more than I trust a Bush baby, a con scamming ass. I mean, dude, your name is literally a con. Your claim to fame was singing about being a convict and being locked up. They won't let you out. Um, sir, yes, yes, Jay Z could pull it off way before a con. God damn, this is sad. He's gonna do all this, and years later, I think they say he maybe has literally a brick, like like one literal brick in the desert somewhere culminating with the iconic Akon Tower piercing the skyline to glorify the genius who created this futuristic urban oasis. For the past four years, Akon and his team have been preparing this city to be ready for you to experience by 2024. And just four years later, this is what Akon City looks like today. Lies, corruption, collusion, a shady cryptocurrency, stealing native land. These are just a few of the villainous acts Akon has been accused of during this disastrous project. At first, many of his supporters saw him as a noble man making valiant efforts to create a real-life utopia, but now they question why the guy who believes that all men are divine kings to be worshipped by women wants to create and lead his own city. But before we get into the fall of Akon City, it is important to understand the actual amazing achievements Akon has made for over a dozen African nations. After oh Lord, what are the achievements, y'all? What are the achievements? Did did he build some <laughs> some wells or something? <laughs> he done brought some water to Africa, y'all. Well, let's see Akon's achievements in Africa. After Akon made millions of dollars in the music industry, he wanted to extend resources to Senegal, which is where he is from. Growing up, Akon knew the struggles of living in the dark once the sun went down. The town in Senegal that he grew up in, like many others, had no access to running water or power. Local economies were forced to shut down businesses when the sun set, and families were constrained to candlelight and kerosene lamps to complete their nightly tasks, resulting in over 3 million deaths each year from harmful fumes and fires. In 2014, Akon Lighting Africa was launched. In the first year of Akon's Lighting Africa project, he brought solar energy to 14 different African nations and I'll all right um when you've been in corporate america as long as i have you realize that when some what some people view as ultra uh altruistic philanthropy is really just somebody trying to get a break on their taxes i mean <laughs> come on all right Although his intentions were noble, he had to implement borderline unethical strategies to convince nations to invest in solar. But before we get into that, a quick word from today's sponsor, Cook Unity. Cook, hey, Cook Unity ain't giving Mike TV no kinds of sponsorship. Fuck you, Cook Unity. Y'all check out HelloFresh instead. Wait, I ain't sponsored by HelloFresh neither. Fuck all of them. Make your own food, okay? Shit, here we go. <laughs> Unity and are hesitant to think about the future. So he strategically approached nations who had upcoming elections, then installed solar systems for free in the village of the leader's choice, such as installing streetlights and solar panels for homes and businesses. Then it made those leaders look like they were invested in progressing their nation, which led to them receiving more votes from citizens. It came to the point that once that village was lit up, now the neighboring villages would bring pressure to the government and ask those same questions. How come we ain't lit up? 
Although many are critical of this tactic, at the end of the day, the communities are the ones who benefit the most. The solar electricity has allowed the vendors to operate for longer hours into the night and for children to study after dark. Also, just the simple installation of streetlights led to decreased crime rates due to the visibility. Hey, homie, maybe you should have just stuck to uh, putting up streetlights in African villages. Putting up streetlights in African villages seems to be the extent of uh, what you're capable of doing the solar powered street lighting provides. By 2020, Acon Lighting Africa has installed 100,000 solar powered street lamps, 1,200 solar microgrids, and has created more than 5,000 jobs. But many people question how Acon was able to finance a project of this size. Sure, his music was successful, but we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars in infrastructure costs. While he was able to land a line of credit for up to $1 billion worth of solar- Damn, not Acon going into business with the Chinese. Lord, Mike TV has been showing a lot of receipts as of late on how the Chinese have been treating the Africans, but Akon's going to sell his fellow Africans out to the Chinaman. All right. Their equipment with the finance arm of China Jiangsu International Group, which is a Chinese government owned construction firm. Most of these African nations could not afford the upfront money for installing solar infrastructure, but Akon's line of credit allowed the governments to pay in installments. But when Bush was in power, Bush created a 200% tax on all solar or all solar related and renewable energy coming into America. So all that investment, those billions of dollars of investment that China put into this was just sitting in factories and sitting in China couldn't be used. So I took advantage of that and went down to China and to partner with some of those companies that couldn't use all that you know, investment that they already already put for, uh, for Europe and America. Because of Acon's efforts, an estimated 28.8 million people can now enjoy the same benefits of electricity that much of the world has enjoyed for decades. You've always ain't this like an African, ain't this like an African to achieve a little bit of success and say, okay, I am the captain now. I can do much greater things. Like, like nigga, you put up some street lights. You went to the Chinaman and said, hey, y'all sitting on a bunch of solar panels. Well, hey, I'm a broker in arrangement between them African countries so they can buy up your product. And you went from that to I'm going to create my own city with hospitals and fire departments and resorts and, <laughs> and Silicon Valley. All right, sir, you should have just stuck to the rivers that you were used to. Why do these Africans always go chasing waterfalls? We said that China has done more for Africa than any other country. I mean, it's true. That's not that's not something anybody can argue with. Yeah. I mean, you know, they came, they laid down infrastructure. They actually did something that the European countries spent around for 400 years and did nothing. That's why if you see Africa now hasn't been developed. This was the responsibility of France, Great Britain, Italy, Italy, Germany. These guys have been in Africa forever. Damn, listen to this African always looking for a handout. They're saying that they can't develop their own country like all these other countries have developed their own country. America was developed by who? Europe was developed by who? And he's going to say because the European nations did business in Africa, they should now help build up the continent because they're now poor and tricked off all the money they made. Make it make sense. And it's never been developed. China just started putting interest in Africa. Now you have roads, roundabouts. Like, they're actually putting structure now. Now, China has been investing in Africa since the early 2000s, but their interest has dramatically increased in the past 10 years, having loaned $170 billion to 49 different nations. And while the Chinese government investing in Africa is a major step forward into the advancement of those nations, some people think that they have a secret evil motive behind their interest. Now, obviously, these Chinese investments need to be paid back. The problem is that Africa's total debt from 2000 to 2022 is around $1.8 trillion dollars, which is 300% higher than Africa's GDP growth rate in the same amount of time. Basically, they're in a lot of debt and don't have a stable way to pay back the money. But that might be exactly what the Chinese government wants. Debt trap diplomacy, or the Chinese debt trap, is essentially their strategy of building expensive infrastructure and assets that these African nations cannot afford, secretly hoping that they will stop making payments and then China will take control of their land. So did Akon sell out his fellow Africans or did Akon sell out his fellow Africans? <clears throat> so the one achievement he's done, the one quote unquote achievement for Africans is him brokering an arrangement between the Chinese and certain African countries where the China man gave them billions of dollars and loans that they knew they couldn't pay back so that they would own pieces of Africa's infrastructure. All right.
All right. And y'all know they do some slick shit over there in Africa. What they do is they say, oh, you can't pay back the loan for, for the solar lights. You can't pay back the loan for the bridges. You can't pay back the loan for the airport. Well, that's cool. You're going to give us the mineral rights for them diamonds. You're going to give us the mineral rights for the oil. You're going to give us the mineral rights in lieu of you defaulting on this loan land or assets that they just built. Now, why would China want to control a bunch of land, resources, and assets in the middle of Africa? Your guess is as good as mine. But these theories were spawned after an investigation into these loan documents. In one report, which analyzed 100 Chinese contracts, it revealed that the loans are structured to give an advantage over other creditors and allows action to be taken if the borrower acts contrary to the interests of a People's Republic of China entity. There are also unusual clauses that shroud agreements in secrecy. So what exactly would constitute as acting contrary to the interest of a Chinese entity? Well, that's really vague, likely on purpose. Who knows what would legally count as acting contrary? And as far as these unusual confidential clauses, well, that alone is enough for some people to believe that China is trying to be vague and non-transparent on purpose. But others believe that this is just extremely standard contract practice. Hey, China is so slick. They've even... Uh, gave African nations money to build uh, like political government buildings and then the Africans find that the buildings are bugged. <laughs> the Chinese are listening to everything they say, everything they do. I mean, come on, Akon, your claim to fame on the continent of Africa is you sold your fellow Africans out to the Chinaman? All right, such philanthropy that the World Bank and any other small bank in existence provides, and that the Chinese debt trap as a whole is just more Western propaganda to one, demonize Africa more, and two, make Americans hate the Chinese government. Think of and yes, let's call a spade a spade dedication. Um, dedication says that Tether didn't have the business acumen to close a deal that size. Let's just be candid about it. Um, somebody hit up Akon's management and said, hey, we need Akon to be our little puppet. Because we trying to broker a deal over in Africa. The Chinese hit up Akon's manager and said, hey, look, we're going to give him some shillings if he helps us cut some deal with his African brethren. I mean, come on, y'all. Akon didn't really put nothing together like that. Think about it this way. When you're buying a house, does the government, the media, or the banks call it a debt trap? No, they call it a smart and often necessary investment into your future. But if you can't make your payments on your house, they take it away, and now they own it. So wouldn't that make buying a house an American debt trap? It just comes down to whether you think China is doing extremely standard business, or do they want these nations to fall short on payments to take over their assets and gain power in Africa? Regardless, Akon's relationship with these Chinese financiers and previous success with lighting Africa allowed him to pitch his newest venture, Akon City. He claims that he was able to get his $1 billion credit line raised to $5 billion with these Chinese investment groups. So he sells out Africa to the Chinese with the lights, and now he does another deal. This time he claims he's going to build a whole city. He's going to build Wakanda. All right. Come on, if you're new to the stream, hit the like button on the way in. Hit the cash app or the PayPal if you support the mission. I am your humble servant after all. The channel's still demonetized, so I thank you guys for help and to keep the lights on. Um, also, a lot of these Africans have been cutting up over on TikTok. In order for me to start producing content on TikTok, I need a 1,000 followers. So if you do have a TikTok, go over there and follow your boy. My channel name is MikeTV999. You can click the link in the chat. As soon as I get a 1,000 followers on TikTok, I can start doing some live streams over there and really, really letting these Africans have it because apparently they're all hiding over there on TikTok. Following the announcement of the city, Akon went on a publicity tour promoting the new project. The president of Senegal gave you three square miles of land. Well, this is the thing. I had to actually buy the land, so it wasn't gifted to me. But what the president and the government are doing, they're actually laying the foundation for all the infrastructure on the land. The basic sewage, electricity, you know, things like that. All the things that have to be set forth for me to build the city on top of. Okay. And they give me 100% full you know, support. The city will be built on a three square mile plot just 60 miles from Dakar, the capital and largest city in Senegal. Now three square miles is not a ton of land, that's 2,000 acres or a little more than double the size of Central Park in New York City. However, Akon says this version of the city is just phase one of a multi-phase plan. He also announced during this time that Akon City would operate fully on their own cryptocurrency called Acoin. Acoin 
Oh, Lord, the scams continue, y'all. The scams continue. And I forget, guys, he wasn't just going to build Wakanda. He was also going to terraform the African landscape and build some kind of ocean or huge lake type body of water. So, yeah, man's just just thinks he's God out here. <laughs> he said, the China man gave me five billion and I'm going to build Wakanda, I promise you. This version of the city is just phase one of a multi-phase plan. He also announced during this time that Acon City would operate fully on their own cryptocurrency called Acoin. Acoin is a stellar-based cryptocurrency designed to fuel rising entrepreneurs in Africa and beyond. Acoin will be used as a common medium of transfer between Africa's 54 countries, each with its own volatile currency, allowing African citizens and entrepreneurs to engage with the digital economy with only a mobile phone. People don't always have access to, you know, bank accounts and right. so on, but everybody has, a, everybody has a phone. Everybody has a phone. So with the phone, you... Damn, so he ain't just building hospitals and resorts and tech meccas and restaurants and creating oceanic bodies of water. I mean, he's also creating his own currency. I mean, all right. All right. Okay, Akon. Mm, mm, mm. You can make payments, Absolutely. and that's how it all kind of fits in. That, that's what thing. makes all the sense in the world. Uh, okay. Acoin is not a groundbreaking technology. Many Africans have adopted crypto for everyday use as it is generally more stable and flexible than their country's native currency. But even before crypto was adopted, over 50 million Africans use M-Pesa, or mobile minutes, which is kind of like the cash app or Venmo of Africa. Millions of Africans can transfer money to family members in different countries or pay for goods and services with ease using m -Pesa. It would be significantly easier for Akon City residents if the country was built around a more commonly used cryptocurrency or just sticking with M-Pesa. So why Acoin? And remember, this is the Bush baby that was talking down to us, talking about we over here complaining about brutality in America. We need to go to Africa and we can build a Fortune 500 company in Africa. Nigga, you can't even build your city. You already got $5 billion from the Chinaman to build. Come on now. How much Acoin do you actually own? I mean... I am the bank. Akon <laughs> said it himself. Damn, Mark Jones. Didn't you just said he's going to have access to everybody's account, selling everybody's money? And this nigga just said, I am the bank. Like, we're playing Monopoly and he's the bank? Okay. Yeah, Akon might as well have said he's raising money for a fleet of intergalactic warships um, because the automatons have just returned and the Terminids have not been pushed back. If you know, you know. My TV's been putting in about 50 hours of Helldivers 2. <laughs> Come on, y'all, let's go. He is the bank. Not only is he building a city named after him, but also creating the currency that he controls and owns the most of. Before launching his Acoin cryptocurrency, the Acoin website announced a pre-sale opportunity called the Token of Appreciation or TOA campaign. This pre-sale was treated like a donation, and donors were promised four tokens for every $1 spent. Acoin was launched on most major crypto exchanges in early 2021 and peaked at around 58 cents, which at the time was around a 132% gain for the TOA holders if they sold. However, the majority believed in Acoin, so they held. Within a few months, the price began spiraling down to roughly 10 cents per coin, taking TOA holders from a 132% gain to a 60% loss. Due to the shocking dip, Acoin admins offered a refund. Damn, come on, not you already having to give out refunds for your currency, Acon. Come on, come on. And yeah, Desmond, I'm playing Helldiver, shit. S send me an email, brother. You can join the squad. Honestly, I'd be playing Helldiver solo most of the time because I'm just a, a real one like that. I think I'm on level nine. I ain't got a... Yeah, I'm on level nine suicide level, but I think there's like two higher levels. I'm like, God damn, God damn. I've been putting in work. Come on to their initial donors. One donor named Marcus said, the refund was meant to come a few weeks later. We are now over a year and we're back at the same situation we were years ago with the lack of communication and now everybody's up in arms. But Marcus isn't alone. The owner of the Go Black to Africa YouTube channel showed proof of him emailing Acoin admins. Yeah, now a white boy over here giving shine to, to go black to Africa. Yes, shout out to that brother. That brother been producing a lot of content exposing the scams and the shit going on in africa 
Yeah. Only to be ignored for years. The YouTuber wrote to Andrew of the Acoin Foundation requesting a refund on December 19th, 2021. Andrew replied 22 days later and said that the YouTuber was added to the list for refund requests and we will be reaching out shortly regarding further details on how to proceed. The YouTuber provided his physical mailing address, which Andrew claimed was the next step towards a refund, only for him to be ignored for four months with no refund, and now it has been three years and still no refund. When Akon was asked about these refunds, he said he had no idea there was any problems. Now that I was because I know all the people that, that I know that was on record, we definitely met with everybody, and this was uh, the agreement that was actually um, agreed on. So if that was anyone outside of that, I definitely... Every time you tell me something, I figure that you're lying. Ooh, it's almost like you're faking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know you're lying. But you sound excited. And you know that I know that you're lying. Oh, girl. Well, that, that I'm just literally on everything finding out. So I'm going to definitely get more involved and figure out what that's about. Um, but we do have instruments in place to make sure those people are happy, even if I gotta go in my own pocket. <laughs> but as far as we know, Akon has not come out of pocket to pay these people back. The coin eventually fell to $0.0029, which is essentially a 100% loss. At the moment, Acoin is not listed on any cryptocurrency exchange, so nobody can buy it, sell it, or use it anywhere. It is worth nothing. Akon had appeared that he was doing a good job. But it seems, though, that he is just like most who would want to use Africa only for his own benefit. As if it couldn't get any worse, Akon City today is an utter ghost town. Last year, this picture went viral of one singular Minecraft Damn, not the one singular block. Concrete brick laid in the center of Akon City, showcasing an extreme lack of progress being made Damn, five billion from the Chinese and all he could do is put a brick in the middle of the desert with a picture, y'all. He already scammed millions with that Akon coin shit. He said he was going to build villages and resorts and towers and Silicon Valleys. And uh, he was basically making Wakanda, guys. Police stations, firefighters, hospitals, oceans, uh, riverfront property. I mean, he was going to do it all. And all these years later... Nigga got a brick and a picture in the middle of the desert. <laughs> scamming ass Africans, y'all. Are we really surprised by another scamming ass African? Considering the fact that Akon said the city would be done by 2024. However, there is a little more than just this one stone. Today in 2024, you can see the first completed building, an extremely standard and non futuristic building that they say is a recreational center. I'm sorry, this nigga got a brick with a picture? and uh, a terrible mural. There's also another small, barely constructed building with a spiral staircase, which, to be fair, does look like a small version of what the original vision... Damn, you must have took a page out of Umar Johnson, because didn't Umar get a dilapidated building and a mural, right? How, how come all these scammers get a shabby-ass bando and paint a mural and try to say they're doing something? depicted. However, 99% of the land remains vacant with wild cattle grazing. Yes, technically construction has begun, but as you can see, this is a far cry from the futuristic megacity we were promised. Akon blamed the pandemic, saying everything would be pushed back by two years, which doesn't really make sense. Not blaming the Panduce. And shout out to Nick. Nick says it's a sign in French. Matter of fact, I didn't even notice it the first time. I thought it was just gibberish. I thought it was just some African gibberish, but I think you're right. That looked like some French. Posse de la Premier Pierre de Econ City. These motherfuckers got this shit in France or Spanish or some shit. It, it ain't in African. It ain't no, in no ancient African dialect. Uh, Lord, this just gets worse. It'll never get better. All right. Because it is them who took the land from the villagers. Originally, the Senegalese government's tourist board, Sapco, was backing the project, saying, We believe in Akon City and we are all supporting Akon so that Akon City will come to life. It will attract tourists and investors in the region, and Sapco is fully committed to the success of this project. But most recently, they have sent Akon a formal notice that if the project has not advanced by next year, its contract with him will be terminated. And since Akon has massively overpromised and massively underdelivered, Damn, not the starving cows. Africans even got their cows famished? Starving? I ain't never seen skinny cows like that in my life. I have never seen a skinny cow like that a day in my life. Lord, oh Lord. 
man, are we so surprised their children are starving when their cattle are starving as well? You ain't even got no got, got, got no grass to graze. You ain't even got no mush to, to get in, no slop to give the farm animals. It's just, oh, damn. And we got another scamming ass African selling out his people to the China man. Say it ain't so. People are starting to question his intentions in the first place. I plan to retire in that city, he says confidently. I don't like to use the word king of the city, but that's what it will turn out to be. Words like this have made some people believe that Akon City is just an empire to inflate his ego at best and a corrupt billion dollar scam at worst. Additionally, Akon's views of the western world's morals and gender roles has made people disagree with him as a leader. But what happens I in today's society, the woman chooses which role she want to play. They in watch. the last 10, 15 hey, years, I haven't met a woman that can actually cook. <laughs> I haven't met a woman that actually wants to clean the house. No, I can, shit. man, bro, I've, I've, I've met the baddest bitches on the globe and asked to go to the bathroom and the bathroom looked like shit. <laughs> Hair all over the place, all kind of products. <laughs> like, come on now. That's a Says the man who gets $5 billion from the Chinese to build a city and all he has is a brick with some pictures in, in French. And um, a bando uh, with some skinny cows out front. All right. Natural instinct. I'm, that's a natural instinct. I'm with you. Maybe this could just be a joke, but Akon does follow a very non-Western style of raising his nine children with seven different women. Single time, you at every single recital. No, oops. that's a white man's thing. Who cares oh. about a recital? The reason why people like me can't spend every single day and minute with their children is because the mother's job is to be there with the children. I'm the man. My job is to provide comfort so the mother can provide and raise those children to be like me. Now, if it's a man, when a child gets to a certain age, that's my responsibility now to show him what a, what a man's role and responsibility is. But you can't expect a man to conquer the world if he's home with children. Nigga, what world conquering are you doing? You scamming out here on a global level. You are, He said, no, I can't see my kids right now because I'm out here scamming and scheming. I'm going to build a city one day. I'm building a city, okay? No, I can't come to, to Lil Cujo's birthday. I am building a city. But Akon, you only have a brick. It's been four years. I'm building a city. I told you. I will not be around for Christmas either. In life, there's roles. Yeah, no. A man has his role. Yes. And a woman has her role. Yes. But the day the woman believes that the man is supposed to share her role with her, then that means she's lacking. So I don't go pull my wife out to the construction site to go pull nails in two by fours because that's not her place. No. This nigga just discovered Kevin Samuels' videos last week. <laughs> he got Kevin Samuels' videos pushed in his algorithm all of a sudden. He said, oh, yeah, I'm the prize. I'm a high-value man. I ain't got time to be in the house all day with no kids. Now, this could be chalked up to just a traditional style of raising a family. But sometimes he justifies his beliefs with extreme levels of bro science. So, as a woman, her role is to support the man. The man, we are the kings. Yeah, Royal, he's scamming his own kids. <laughs> Daddy wasn't there because Daddy's out doing scams. He's scamming his children. He's scamming his family. He's scamming everybody, y'all. He just wants scamming as nigga. Lord, is he Nigerian? <laughs> what tribe he from? And the divine of this universe. They, a woman can never compare to the man. They have to understand that here in America. The woman don't create life. They support the creation of life. A man right now can create life without a woman, but a woman can't create life without a man. If I wanted to create life right now without a woman, I would just shoot my sperm, put it in the incubator, and just give it nine months, even maybe less. Did this nigga just say he can make a baby in a laboratory? He said he gonna shoot his sperm in an incubator, and where did has that ever been successful? What, what's going on? He said he don't need women. He don't even want women to carry his baby. He said he can have him in the laboratory. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. He overdosed on manosphere content, y'all. <laughs> you know, the Africans go all in when they got a new grift. He just manosphere, uh, he just overdosed on manosphere content. That's all. That's all. <laughs> he gonna, he's asexual. He's going to have a baby by himself and he's going to be the daddy and the mommy. <laughs> and he's not going to be there at all. <laughs> With today's science and a, a baby will be born a woman can't do that 
Hopefully in Akon City, he is not in charge of the education curriculum because his science is considerably off here. Akon is likely referring to vitro gametogenesis, which is essentially creating an egg and a sperm outside of the human body to create a life. And the answer is no, we cannot do this right now. We can fertilize a female egg and a male sperm in a lab environment, but in order to give birth, the fertilized embryo must be transferred back to the woman's uterus. At the absolute worst, Akon could be a scammer with a god complex, who is willing to take Chinese money to build infrastructure that African nations cannot afford, only to line his own pockets while these nations crumble and get taken over by the Chinese government. Or at best, he is truly trying to build a futuristic utopia for Africans, and unfortunately, the massive political and economic responsibilities were far more than he could handle. And as of right now, Akon City won't exist for a very long time. Damn, not the white boy roasting Akon like that. Ooh, let's drop a bomb for the white boy. Oh lord, he came with some receipts. He came with some receipts. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is all I have for you this evening. I will be live on Saturday as well as Sunday. I have enjoyed my time with you all. Royal said that white boy wanted to be adopted into the FBAA. He, he, he might be 2% black, okay? He might just be high, high yellow. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Cameron says, uh, Mike TV asked China to get you a scat pack. Yeah, hey, guys, I'm going to tell you ahead of time. There might be a day that I sell out. If I'm ever making streams telling you guys to go to Africa, then you know I, I I didn't got some money from the Chinese, okay? <laughs> so I'm just going to tell you ahead of time. I, I, I might get real down bad, and, and I might just really need to exploit you all. And, and the Chinese, apparently, they're giving out, you know, $5 billion loans and whatnot. So, hey, I got to do what I got to do, okay? got to do what I got to do. <laughs> but all right, guys, we'll see you guys over the weekend. Uh, thank you guys for showing up and showing out. Let me go ahead and drop a bomb for our live viewing audience. Let me drop a bomb for everybody who hit the Cash App, who hit the PayPal. Thank you guys for sponsoring the production. And huge shout out to everybody who will be watching the replay. Go ahead and put in the comments section, hashtag replay gang. I appreciate you all that watch the replays. All right, y'all, until next time. And I think I will leave you with a dire warning. Remember. We ain't got no business going to Africa. I don't care how many people try to convince you. I don't care if they tell you you're going to become a billionaire. You're going to become a Bill Gates. You're going to build a Fortune 500 company in less than five years. I don't care if they say they have a new Wakanda city they're building. There's no reason for us to leave the safety of our country to go over there with them, the land of which they're fleeing from. And with that, I'm out of here. I'll see you guys over the weekend. Creep on in, on in, on in. Because all this wicked stuff they're doing to diasporans, killing us on the continent, people showing up dead and nobody know what happened. God, Allah, does not approve of this. And that's why I'm here. They took my heart job. They took my earphones. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Just last week, uh, Veronica Histed, who had a YouTube channel and was a Black American, and the last video on her channel was six months ago. There was a woman named Mary who owned a boutique 
called Natty Locks Boutique, where she did hair and she and her employees did hair over in the Gambia. There was Beverly Allen, who they also called Dr. Beverly. And there was Audrey Davis, who had a YouTube channel as well called Soul Her Sistar. All five of those women passed away within the last nine months to a year all unexpectedly, 